Persona 5 Royal is the best game on PlayStation 4, followed very closely by vanilla Persona 5. The story of the Phantom Thieves is not only my favorite journey in the Persona series, but also one of my all-time favorite video games. So imagine my excitement when they announced a Persona 5 spin-off coming in the form of a Musou game. Originally titled Persona 5 Scramble and then localized as Persona 5 Strikers, can this follow-up journey help to bear the weight of its pedigree? Let's find out! This review is spoiler-free for Persona 5 Strikers, however Strikers itself contains spoilers for Persona 5 and Persona 5 Royal. If you'd like to avoid those spoilers, this is your opportunity to click away. In the meantime, please subscribe and hit the bell to get updates whenever I post new content. You can also check out my other videos at the end, like my spoiler-free review of Persona 5 Royal. Okay, if you're still here, then you know what you're signing up for, so it's showtime. This review is based on the digital PlayStation 4 release played on the PlayStation 5 and the physical Nintendo Switch release. Persona 5 Strikers takes place during the summer after Persona 5. Joker decides to return to Tokyo to spend summer vacation with his friends. During a routine shopping trip to Shibuya, the gang is suddenly thrown back into the metaverse, where they meet a strange amnesiac girl named Sophia. Together, the reborn Phantom Thieves set out to unravel the truth behind the all-too-familiar mysterious incidents that now plague Japan. This is as much a Persona story as any other in the series, including Persona 5. Important to note is that this is a follow-up to vanilla Persona 5, not Persona 5 Royal, much in the same way that Persona 4 Arena was not a continuation of Persona 4 Golden. Strikers is also much more of a true sequel than any other spin-off before it, and I love that. It's much more linear than a mainline Persona game, and there's only one ending, but all the major beats are here. I was thrilled to continue the journey of our ragtag rebels, and the narrative of Persona 5 Strikers fulfilled that desire thoroughly. Striker's performance varies on each platform, with the PC and PlayStation versions obviously running much better than the Switch. PC is functionally identical to PlayStation on its resolution suite, and the frame rate is locked at 60fps. Base model PS4s run the game at 1080p with a target 60fps, and it only drops a handful of frames here and there when it gets crazy hectic. Given that it's a Musou game though, hectic is common. Therefore, if you have a PS4 Pro, I'd suggest looking at the performance toggle in the settings. PS4 Pro's quality mode hits 1440p with a similar frame rate to base model PS4's. Frame rate mode will lock the resolution at 1080p and the game will hit a consistent 60fps. On PS5 though, there's no reason to run the game on frame rate mode. Strikers on PS5 can run at 1440p 60fps no problem. The Nintendo version makes the requisite sacrifices in lieu of the Switch's form factor. Docked performance runs at a dynamic 1080p, with handheld dropping the resolution to a dynamic 720p upscale. Switch targets 30fps, though it has some trouble hitting that mark. I figured there would be some stutters during action segments, but even basic activities and cutscenes have minor problems. It's not constant, nor is it the worst I've ever seen. At most, it drops to about 25fps by my count but it can still be pretty annoying. The draw distance has also been markedly shortened on Switch, and the load times are about 30% slower than even base model PS4s. Essentially, the Nintendo version is far and away inferior to the PlayStation version. It's all the obvious cutbacks with a moderate amount of the common technical issues found with Switch ports. But if you're dead set on getting this game on Switch, these are probably sacrifices you're willing to make, and have probably made with other games in the past. On all platforms, Strikers is in dire need of some visual post-processing, specifically anti-aliasing. It's more apparent on Nintendo Switch due to that version's lesser visual fidelity. Normally, I'd say tablet mode is overall preferable due to the smaller screen hiding many of the graphical and performance cutbacks. And while that remains true with Strikers for masking technical things like frame rate and raw resolution, the game's aliasing actually impacts handheld clarity more than docked clarity. It just looks much grainier on the tablet screen. PlayStation and PC have aliasing as well, though I personally find it easier to ignore due to the better overall image quality. Still, I think Strikers looks pretty good. With certain things like the lighting and some of the background textures, I actually think Strikers looks better than Vanilla Persona 5, because Vanilla Persona 5 was also on PlayStation 3. There are some obvious problems across all platforms, and the Nintendo version is clearly lesser in favor of portability but I didn't find any issues on any platform to be calamitous in nature. 
Of course, you can't have a Persona game without great audio, and the voice acting is fantastic. All the main cast members reprised their roles, and their performances are as amazing as ever. There were some mild EQ issues, but nothing actively poor, and both English and Japanese dialogues are available. I love both language options for different reasons, but in accordance with tradition, I continued my Persona 5 journey in English. And you had to know that the music would be just as good. Strikers had a steep hill to climb, because Vanilla and Royal had such phenomenal soundtracks. But Strikers stands toe-to-toe -to -toe with both of them, featuring many returning songs, as well as remixed and original works made expressly for Strikers. So yeah, just like its predecessors, Stryker's audio is fantastic. The voice acting is superb, and the music is tremendous. I guess there's no real surprise there. The gameplay is the biggest departure from the core series. In place of the turn-based combat of the main games, Stryker's sports a Muso hack-and-slash combat system, carefully melded together with the mechanics of Persona 5. You have basic and special attacks that are strung together for various combos, and you'll unlock more combos and technique upgrades as you progress with each character. Holding the left shoulder button aims your gun. Holding the right shoulder button pulls up your Persona skills, which pauses time and functions the same as the rest of the Persona series. There are contextual actions such as all-out attacks and ambushes, and as you battle, the showtime meter will gradually increase. Once it's full, you can perform a showtime maneuver. Showtimes in Strikers are slightly different from Royal's showtimes. In Strikers, showtimes are basically ultimate persona attacks that deal elemental damage to all enemies in the battle arena. Some things have changed, of course. For starters, the metaverse is different. In place of palaces, Strikers contains jails, which are much larger, usually taking up the real estate of an entire district or city. Each jail is ruled by a monarch hoarding desires instead of treasure. There are core items locked in places known as prison keeps, which are usually protected by sub-bosses. And you'll have to clear all prison keeps and a warden before you can secure your route to the desires. Sometimes you'll need Futaba to hack into something, which will trigger a hacking battle. These are endlessly spawning waves of enemies that try to attack Futaba until her hack meter reaches 100%. And there are other occasional battle types that are typical of the Musou genre. However, Persona 5 Strikers is almost more Persona 5 than Musou. Outside the metaverse, I was pleasantly surprised by just how much Persona 5 DNA has been interwoven with the Musou mechanics. For reference, I love Fire Emblem, but I didn't really care for Fire Emblem Warriors because I felt all the Fire Emblem content was very shallow compared to the Warriors content. The same can be said for the first Hyrule Warriors. I haven't played Age of Calamity yet, so I can't speak for that one, but Hyrule Warriors 1 to me felt like too much Musou, not enough Zelda. Strikers, though, has free roaming areas with shops and vending machines, you can cook and do side quests, and you engage in social activities with your fellow Phantom Thieves. There were a lot of times where I actually just forgot that I wasn't playing a Persona JRPG. Strikers felt very faithful to the source material, which was exactly what I wanted. Not everything from Persona 5 made the cut, though. Most of the supporting cast does not return, and their individual functions have been consolidated into Sophia. There are no romance options, nor secret endings, and Strikers has made metaverse progression a lot easier. For instance, there's no end-of-day transition when leaving the jail. You can come and go as you please at each checkpoint, which will restore your health and SP. You'll occasionally encounter a scenario where the game won't allow you to leave, but most of the time the only thing stopping you from returning to reality is how much progress you want to make. Once you hit a checkpoint, there's usually nothing stopping you from leaving, healing automatically, and then jumping right back in at the same checkpoint. That's not to say there's no challenge, but the challenge is that of a Musou game rather than an RPG, which is fine because this is a Musou game. Looking at the bigger picture, I'm thoroughly impressed with Striker's gameplay. It perfectly blends the Warriors genre with the inherent functions of the Persona series. 
Musou fans will have plenty of hack and slash action to sink their teeth into, and Persona lovers will get just as much Persona content to explore and dissect. In fact, I would argue that this is the most well-balanced content of any Musou crossover I've ever played. The Persona series began life as spin-offs to Shin Megami Tensei, and I obviously love Persona. The spin-offs to Persona, though, have been hit and miss for me. But Persona 5 Strikers blew all my expectations completely out of the water. Where previous spin-offs were alternate genre pieces with a Persona-themed facade, Strikers fully embodies its Musou genre, while still remaining intrinsically a Persona game. It's almost quite literally the best of both worlds. Yes, there are the unfortunate technical issues across all platforms, Nintendo Switch chief among them. And the absences of the supporting cast and true social mechanics may disappoint a lot of players. But given my experiences with previous Warriors crossover titles, my time with Strikers was less what I expected and more what I wanted. That is to say, it's basically Persona 5 2. And I'm always happy to continue the journey of the Phantom Thieves. Persona 5 Strikers earns a 9.5 out of 10 on PlayStation 4 and PC, and a 9 out of 10 on Nintendo Switch. Be sure to check out my Persona 5 Royal Review, which is annotated on screen, and of course, subscribe and hit the bell. Thanks!